good morning to each and every one. I'll be brief to give way to Brother Joseph. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 22. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat, neither what you take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then are not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Let me stop right there and I'll get another few verses here. Take no thought for your life. We get wound up in day-to-day -day life, don't we? We get caught up in what we've got going on that we think we've just got to get to. And he makes a statement here. And which of you, by taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Now, if I could take thought and add to, to as added to my stature... I've been about six foot four. It doesn't work that way, does it? You say, what's the point of that, preacher? The point is the point that the Lord's making. That you get wound up in things you can't do anything about. Things that are not truly that important. That's easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. Verse 29, and I'll encourage you to read this entire chapter, but in verse 29, the Lord says, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be of a doubtful mind. Now there's something that plagues us all from time to time, doesn't it? A doubtful mind. Yeah. A doubtful mind. So then let us consider something. Let's just go to verse 33 and 34. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. But where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is. Where treasure is a thing of highly estimated value. What's, what do we estimate as of great value in our lives day to day? Well, we have a lot of things to be thankful for, don't we? Yeah. Family, friends. But as children of the Lord Jesus Christ, as those that have been bought with a price, that'll be the greatest value in our life, shouldn't it? Yeah. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon spoke and said, well, let me just turn over there and read that. Ecclesiastes, the word of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. So Solomon is speaking here. Solomon is an old man. He's, now, if you read the life of Solomon, you understand Solomon was blessed beyond measure, naturally speaking. He pursued everything that could satisfy him carnally. He pursued wealth. He pursued knowledge. He pursued building. He pursued entertainment. He pursued satisfaction of the flesh. He pursued everything that could the world could offer. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king of Jerusalem, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. All the things that he had pursued were empty to him, weren't they? Yeah. That in Matthew... Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. Jesus speaking again 
the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy therefore goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth the field. He sold out and bought in. Let us ask ourselves the question this morning. Are we willing to sell out our interest in the world and buy into the service of God? We've been blessed with a lot of young folks in this church of late. We ought to remind all of ourselves where our treasure is, there will a heart be also. Good job. I spoke on this verse of scripture before in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 in verse 24 a man that hath friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother And Jesus is the friend of sinners. Now think, let's think about that for a second. Let's go over to the book of the Gospel of John. Even he tells them, his disciples, in verse 13, Great love hath no man than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I have commanded. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord did. But I have called you friends. For all things I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Jesus was the friend of sinners like you and I. Amen. He loved us so much that he laid his life down for us that we may go free. Right. So what does a friend do. Now Jesus is our friend. He's given us, I would say, the example of how we ought to show it to him and show it to one another. Seeing as he is our example, is he not? Yes. Right. So what does a friend do? One thing is the help one another. Let's go over to the book of Matthew in chapter 25. Now, we're talking about this in the service of God as being the friend of Jesus as he was our friend. I want to see if we can go both ways with this. In verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him all, shall be all gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. 
I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, when saw, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? And when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer them and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it to one of these, one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. How do you tell somebody's a friend to you? It's how they act towards you. Yeah. Especially when you're in need. I want to ask you a question. If you ever have these issues, would you or would you not be thankful when your friend would come to your assistance? You do it unto the one of the least of God's people. You've done it unto him. Amen. So you see. And the reverse is true also. So you want to be a friend. You've got to do things to show charity one to another. And when you do that, you've done it to the Lord. He said, you've done to the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. When's the last time we made the effort to see? And see if we find anyone like that. I'll fall short on that. He said uh, uh, to the Galatian church that to do good to all the, all men, especially to those that are of the household of faith. Brothers and sisters, let's present ourselves friendly one to another. If you do it unto the least of God's people, you've done it unto him. And uh, you can do it to the grace of his people too. Brothers and sisters, let's show how much we appreciate what the Lord has done for us by being good to his people. Now then. What is something you like to do with your friends? Now, I will tell you this, that when I was younger, or when I was about 12 years old, I used to like to spend a lot of time with somebody in this room. I consider him a great friend. I still do. I spent a lot of time at his house. Wouldn't it be something if we, the friend of sin, if Jesus is our friend, we spend time at his house. Amen. Let's take a look. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10. And verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Brothers and sisters, we cannot exhort one another to love and good works if we're not there. But said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the matter of some is. Now there's sometimes things do come up. But every time we have opportunity, we can come together. Why? Because this is where you find the friend that sticks closer than a brother. If the true, if the right spirit is here, this is where you're going to find. It. 
Is he worthy of our being? Yes. Yeah. Is he worthy of the best we've got? Yeah. The answer to that is actually answered earlier in this same chapter. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. One sacrifice for sins. He did what was necessary to put you in heaven. Yeah. And that's why we're here this morning. That we're about to do our communion service. The emblems that we remember what Christ did for us. How good it is to be in his house to observe those things. Now then, what is something else that we are going to do today that friends would do? Let's go over to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. We're about to share a meal together over here in our lunchroom. That's friends, right? How good is it for us to spend time, close time, in conversation with our Lord? Now, also it talks about supping, or having something to drink and perhaps something to eat. Brothers and sisters, it would be an amazing thing if we prayed every time we come around the dinner table. Now we do it today, we'll do it today when we go over there. And that's good. But can we do it at home? Can we sup with the Lord while we're in our homes and have a communion with Him there at your home? Right. Spending time in meditation and in the living like you believe you have the presence of God with you. Is God everywhere present, nowhere absent? Right, absolutely. How much better is it when He has manifested His presence to you? Right. It takes opening that door. It's not going to make you a child of God. Right. He's not knocking on dead sinners' door. He's knocking on your door as a member of the church. These are members of the church He was knocking on the door of. Have we prepared our heart in anticipation that he's going to be here? Have we prayed that the Lord would be with us? Have we prayed that the Lord would bless the assembly of his saints here today? He's the one that sticks closer than a brother. Can we show our friendliness back to him? That's the point I'm trying to get across today. Is that God loved us enough to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. He loved us enough, <clears throat> chose us before the foundation of the world, and is long suffering when, it's, when we sin, mm -hmm. and laid all of the sin on God, on His Son, Jesus Christ, that we may go free. Are we willing to show that kindness? Back to one another. And also back to him. Because <coughs> I want to ask you a question.
spoke on the model prayer several weeks ago, or maybe in last week. The very first sentence that you say, Our Father who art in heaven. Think of back when you were a child. How much time did you spend with your father? Your earthly father. Would you consider your father, in some cases, to be your friend? Enough that you would spend some time with him. Well, brothers and sisters, that model of prayer is you spending time with your <coughs> Heavenly Father. How much time have we spent with our Heavenly Father and with our Lord Jesus Christ? It says to go into your closet and to pray. <coughs> that doesn't necessarily mean get in your closet because I can't get in my closet. I've got too many clothes in there. But Peter did it on the rooftop. When he was shown the meats and said to the rise, slay and eat. Peter was practicing that he was living in the presence of God. And he had the Lord's help. <clears throat> about to go to Cornelius. How about us? And we practice in the thought that the next time we go in the service of God, we need His help. And maybe the Lord would manifest His presence with us today. And then we can show our appreciation of it in our service one to another and our service to Him. Is it worth it? Is it worth our effort? Have you been forgiven much? Can you forgive one another? Has the Lord been gracious to you? Can you be gracious to one another? What about our service this afternoon that we're about to partake of? They were discussing who the greatest among them was. Or thinking who the greatest among them was. And the greatest among them was the servant. Because then he bowed down and washed their feet. Can we consider one another friends enough, brothers and sisters in the Lord, to wash one another's feet? Why is that a big deal? Because the Lord's been good to us, hasn't he? Can we show that one to another? Uh, can we show that in the way that we present ourselves here and present ourselves when we're able? Sometimes we're not able. I'm sure. That the other thing that he said in verse 22 of this that all those churches always had the same thing said to them. He that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Are we willing to listen to what the Lord says to us? Are we willing to provide the best efforts for the friend that sticks closer than a brother? Are we willing to show our appreciation for the one that stretched out his arms on the cross of Calvary in great agony?
tell you a lot of that, and if you look at what Christ went through on the cross, or anybody went through for crucifixion for that matter, it's brutal. That's what Christ did for you. He had full view of that cross when he came here. But the good news is, he said that of all which the Father hath given to him, he should lose nothing. Are you thankful for Christ that lost nothing? Are you thankful for a cross to save sinners who like me? Then can we call him our friend? Can you say the Lord has been your friend? Do you sing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and think about what a friend you really do have in Jesus? If you do, show that love back to him and to his people. Because him that hath friends must show himself friendly. So if Jesus is the friend of sinners like I am, maybe I'll present myself friendly back to him and to those who I'm with. Because he's worth it. And sometimes they'll have disagreements. The apostles did. Churches do. That's why they got Matthew chapter 18. The so brothers and sisters, we got an awesome Savior yeah. that is worthy of the best esteem that we can get. Right. Worthy of the best we can do one to another. Because think about this. Spent a lot of time at that house in that summer. Brother Johnny back there. And it's real easy for me to be friends with him because we enjoyed being around each other and things of that nature. <coughs> but the more amazing thing is the Lord loved his enemies. Because our mind in its natural state is the enemy of God. Right. Yeah, my Savior loves me so. That's why he said in, in that hymn we just sang, Count the feet of Jesus. My Savior loves me so. Then we tell him that we believe in that the love is real. You believe God's love is real? Yeah. Then can we act like it? Yeah. Live with the thought that the Lord has been so great and gracious to you. Sinners in need of a Savior, and He provided Himself. He's loved this place long, for 208 years long enough to leave you a church here. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Right. Couldn't have done it without him. Right. Can't preach without him. Right. We can't hear without him. Right. But he loves us enough to let, let us hear his goodness and feel his presence. He that loved us so, can we show how much we love him? Not gonna make it, child of God. Those goats didn't make themselves sheep. But those sheep were thankful to have a Savior Amen. and a right. shepherd right. that takes them where they need to go and does what they need for them. Sometimes sheep aren't very smart. But when the shepherd leads them, they ought to follow. He loves you enough to go with you, guide you, in the ways you ought to go. Brothers and sisters, 
Jesus is the friend of sinners. Do you believe that? If so, remember that as we go into the communion service today. Remember the body that was broken on your behalf. Remember the blood that was shed from the one that was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Humbled himself, became obedient even a bit to obedient of the death of the cross. But before he went to that cross, he washed his disciples' feet. Yeah. Can we remember that? as we do these things. This thing is now worthy. The churches that were there in Asia Minor that was written in the book of Revelation 2 originally. They needed to hear how good Christ had been to them and what they needed to know. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless us with the same thing. Bless us with the message. Bless us with our instructions. Can we use this to the honor and glory of Him? May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.